we are talking about uh, ethernet that is wired lans local area networks these are wired lans or ethernet 802 standard of ieee so in 1985 the computer society of ieee started a project called as project 802 to set standards to enable intercommunication among equip equipment from a variety of manufacturers see there were various manufacturers or manufacturers which who were willing to come to this business there has to be some standard to to have communication among varied variety of manufacturers product project 802 was doing that this is a way of specifying function of the physical layer and the data link layer of major lan protocols we'll see the data link layer and physical layer with respect to 802 so ieee standards for lan that is local area network as you are aware that the data link layer consists of two parts that is llc logical link control and msc that is media access control all parts all layers above it and then physical layer here this is the ethernet physical layer you can have token ring mac that is you know mac media access control we can have token bus physical layer so with respect to iso osi or internet modem the physical layer can contain the ethernet token ring token bus of course the transmission media as per the ieee standard the hdlc frame compared with the llc and mac frame that is data link layer frame the hdlc frame consists of the address the control the upper layer data and the fcs this fcs has llc pdu and mac frame what this mean is it controls uh, it contains the dsap that is destination service access point and ssap that is source service access point along with the control and upper layer data while the mac frame has of course mac header the mac payload and the fcs so these this hdlc frame with respect to the llc or mac frame you can see the difference the original ethernet when well, we are talking about the standard ethernet right now the original ethernet was created in 1976 at xerox palo alto research center park since then it has gone through four generation we will briefly discuss the standard ethernet in this section max sub layer and physical layer so ethernet evolution among uh, four generation it started with standard ethernet around 10 mbps speed then fast ethernet 100 mbps then gigabit ethernet 1 gbps and then 10 gigabit ethernet now 10 gbps this is uh, medium access uh, control frame and uh, the preamble is 56 bits of alternating ones and zeros then we have sfd that is this is the start frame delimiter and the flag is this flag we have destination address source address length or type date and padding and the cyclic redundancy code of four bytes the minimum and maximum length of data and padding that is the minimum payload length for ethernet 46 bytes maximum payload length 5500 bytes and the frame length 512 bits for 64 bytes and maximum frame length around this much bits for or this is uh, 15 18 bytes so the frame length is 512 bytes minimum maximum is 12144 bits this is an example of an ethernet address in an hexadecimal notation how many is this 48 bits are there these are 48 bits it exactly has came from 6 bytes 6 8s are 48 so 48 bits are there and we represent it with uh, because not very easy to understand so we represent it with hexadecimal bits like this in in uh, the in couples and followed by the columns multi class and unicast address 
Mini cast means zero if you go to only one one path, one destination. Multi cast if this is one, then it will go to various uh, you know acceptors or receivers. So the least significant bit of the first byte defines the type of address. If the bit is zero, the address is unique cast. Otherwise, it is multi cast sent to various receivers. The broadcast destination address is a special case of the multi cast address in which all the bits are ones. The most broadcast destination address all ones. Now let us see. Define the type of the following destination address. These are various types of destination address. So how to find out the type of address? For this, we need to look at the second hexadecimal digit from the left. If it is even, the address is unicast. If it is odd, the address is multicast. And if all the digits are Fs, like in C, the address is broadcast. We have the following uh, observations here. The this is a unicast address. Why? Because A, this one in binary is one zero one zero. So it shows that it is unicast. And then this one, the second one we see. Uh, that is, we look at the second hexadecimal digit from the left. What is this seven? Seven in binary is zero one one one. That is this one. So we have one here. This shows that it is a multicast. If all Fs are there, the the destination address or the type of address is the broadcast address. Now, next is the show how the address this one is sent out on line. So, how it is sent on line? The address is sent left to right, left to right, byte by byte. For each byte, it is sent right to left. See, the address is sent from left to right, byte by byte, and for each byte, it is sent right to left. That is bit by bit. This is how it is done. Then there are various categories of standard Ethernet. The standard Ethernet uh, we have common implementation of this type. Just consider Ethernet as nothing but the wire. The wire you see. Uh, there are, we'll see about uh, other definitions also, but for right, right now, just consider what we are talking about is what is happening inside a wire. Those frames which are going on, those bytes which are going on, bits which are going on, and these like standard Ethernet common implementations. Ethernet 802.3. So we have 10 base 5. This is bus thick coaxial. 10 base 2, again a bus thin coaxial. T for an. UTP, you know, twisted pair, unshielded twisted pair, then F for fiber, star fiber. So encoding in a standard Ethernet implementation, if you have 10 Mbps data, so, so you use the Manchester encoding and then in the, you send it through twisted pairs of say fibers and then again Manchester decoder decodes it to the actual data. This is 10 base 5 implementation. That means 10 means 10 in base speed, 5 means it goes up to 500 meter. And base means it is a baseband, baseband signal. That is a digital signal. So, cable end, these are two cable ends. These are transceivers, means trans transmitter and receiver. The transceiver cable, maximum of 50 meter. And this is a thick coaxial cable, maximum of, of 500 meter. And if you want to send more than that, you can. Just add one more cable and have a repeater in between. This is the 10 base 2 implementation. 10 means 10 Mbps, base band means digital or base band signal, and 2 is around 185 meter. So the cable end, these are cable end, these are thin coaxial cable, maximum of 185 meter. This is 10 base 2. So you have a 10 Mbps, base band signal, digital, and T means twisted pair. This is 10 base T hub. So, two pairs of UTP cables are there. For T, that is twisted pair. So, you can see these are the twisted pairs. And uh, you'll see like this, you know, in the form of helix, helical shape. Then 10 base F, what it means? 10 Mbps fiber, baseband or digital signal. 
this is Genbase F hub with two fiber optic cables. So summarize them what we have just seen about the wires of the Ethernet. The summary of standard Ethernet implementation. The media is 10 base 5, that means this is 10 Mbps baseband 500 meter. These are thick coaxial cable, the line encoding all are having Manchester. 10 base 2 means uh, 10 Mbps 185 meter thin coaxial cable. 10 base T means 100 meter 2 UTP, that is unshielded twisted pair. 10 base F means 2000 meter because it is fiber, baseband single 2 fiber, means 2 fiber somewhere. Then there were changes in the standard. The 10 Mbps standard Ethernet has uh, gone through several changes before moving to the higher data rates. So these changes actually opened the road to the evolution of the Ethernet to become compatible with other high data rate lines. And in this we had bridged Ethernet, switched Ethernet and full duplex Ethernet. Uh, that means they are sharing the bandwidth. So if uh, the speeds are say 5 or 100 Mbps, we have one frame and they are sharing the bandwidth that is the with respect to time, the data data as you can see, this is the first station, this is the second station. So a network with without bridge, this is without bridge and this is with a bridge, we have bridge in between. The collision domains in an unbridged network and a bridge network, so this is without bridge, you have a bridge between, you have the various domains connected with a bridge. So this is how uh, collisions uh, are avoided or handled. So this is the switched Ethernet means we have a switch in between and all domains or systems are connected to the to the switched and this is the star topology as you can see and this is the most widely used now. What about the full duplex switched Ethernet that means with the switch the transmit and receive can be done at the same time with every node or station. Then came the fast Ethernet. Fast Ethernet was designed to compete with the LAN protocols such as MDDI and Fiber Channel. So IEEE created fast Ethernet under the name 802.u, u for fast Ethernet. So fast Ethernet is backward compatible with standard Ethernet, but it can transmit 10 times faster at a rate of 100 Mbps. 10 Mbps became 100 Mbps by fast Ethernet. So this is the fast Ethernet topology. This was point to point and this is star. As I said, most of the today's topologies are star. And the common fast Ethernet implementations were 100 base TX, 100 base FX and 100 base T4. So here we have two wires, category 5 wires, category 5 UTPs. These are F, that is two wires, fiber wires. And here we have four, four wires, uh, UTP, unshielded twisted pair, category 3. This is the encoding of fast Ethernet implementation. Two UTP category 5, here two fibers are there. Here four category 3 UTP. Uh, these are used, wires are used for 100 base TX, 100 base FX, and 100 base T4. So, summary of fast Ethernet implementation with respect to the media, number of wires, maximum length, and uh, block encoding, line encoding. So, these were the, the parameters we have just seen. Then came the gigabit or 1000 Mbps Ethernet. The need for an even higher data rate resulted in the design of Gigabit Ethernet protocol. So IEEE committee calls it as 802.3Z, 802.3, then 802.3U, then 802.3Z. So in the full duplex mode of Gigabit Ethernet means 1000 Mbps, we are talking about 1000 Mbps that is Gbps. There is no collision. The maximum length of the cable is determined by the signal attenuation in the, the cable. These are the topologies of Gigabit Ethernet, again star, two stars, hierarchy of stars along with combined through switches. These are Gigabit Ethernet implementation, 1000 base SX, 1000 base LX, 1000 base CX and 1000 base T. So this is two wire short wave fiber, this is two wire long wave fiber. This is two wire copper, C for copper, and this is four wire UTP, T for UTP. And this is the encoding gigabit Ethernet implementation for two fiber or two STPs in these three, and for 100 base T, it is four UTP cables. The summary of GBPS is like this, 
I mean, length you can see it can it can go up to say you know five thousand meter. That is five kilometer, five a long way. This is a huge improvement. It comes up to five category five. Then came the ten gigabit Ethernet implementation, which is the present one. There are three different uh, characteristics or categories you can say: ten G base S, ten G base L, ten G base E. Now this is short uh, wave multi mode. This is long wave single mode. This extended single mode. And the maximum length goes up to 10 km for 10G base L, and for others it goes to up to 40 km. You know, this is very very good improvement. So these were uh, you know discussion about the Ethernet. Thank you so much. Take care.